Hello folks, got something a little bit faster and dirtier than usual for you this week on account of being betrayed repeatedly by a series of vehicles. This is Lacuna, designed by Mark Gerritz and directed and published by CMYK Games. Lacuna Matata. It means some worries for about 10 to 15 minutes and two players. And before we rock it off into this incredibly simple explanation of an incredibly simple game, it's time for ba -ba -da -ba 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 disclaimer. We have loved and reviewed a great number of CMYK's games, and that's why we ended up working with them on some projects. Projects that we still promote because we still think they're blooming great. All human experience is subjective and trying to make objective reviews is a fool's errand. However, it's information that you should be aware of when we start waxing lyrical about their games. <laughs> Although if I could just be honest with you for one little minute, I would prefer at this stage if they stopped making such wonderful games because then we wouldn't have to do these disclaimers, but they keep making things that are absolutely wonderful. All right, that's the cat out of the bag. This game, it's absolutely wonderful. And so what do you get inside of the tube? One large handful of colorful wooden bits, a pretty peach pouch full of player pieces, an instruction manual this big, although thick enough to use as a slightly semi-effective fan, and this beautiful cloth designed for cleaning glasses or removing small stains off of your computer monitors. But I don't really understand why they made it this big. But the star of the show is the tube itself, temporarily anyway. After putting all of the pieces into it, it's got a little hole in it, and you add the spice to the game. Like that. Although usually half the pieces don't fall onto the floor. In the event that they've all clumped up in a nightmarish fashion, you just spread them around a little bit until they're kind of evenishly spaced around the board. Well, this is how you're supposed to do it according to the manual, but personally, every now and then, I like to have it clumpy style. <laughs> Once you're all loosely happy with your floral distribution, we're gonna get out these metal pieces, which I've poured into a pot from the bag and then onto the table for absolutely no reason. One player will be silver, the other will be gold. You're halfway there to knowing how to play the game because the rules of this one are deliciously simple. These little flower shapes, all you've gotta do is place one of your tokens in a line between two of them. Once you've done that, you then take the two pieces at either end of the line. You're then going to take it in turns to do this, placing pieces, taking flowers, until each player has placed all six of their tokens. And then we enter the bonus round, which we'll come back to a little bit. It's not as bonusy as you'd think, but it is a little bit juicy. There are, of course, slightly more rules than I've let on here. When you're placing a piece, yes, you're trying to draw a line between two different pieces, and then you can pick them up. You cannot do two different sets within one cross section. And also, if there is another piece blocking the direct line between these two pieces, then you cannot take it. This immediately opens up a wealth of cheeky placement options. When you're putting things in specific positions, trying to collect some flowers whilst also blocking future lines for the other player. Now, I've said this so many times that I'm frankly bored of being me. But the best games, the most timeless ones, are the ones in which the rules unfold as you play. Skull is a fantastic example of this. The first time you play it, first time you teach it, people don't really see what the game is. The second game with new players is always beautiful, as people naturally discover the tool set they've got and overly use it in a way which is quite comical. Lacuna is a game that unfolds too, like a beautiful flower, if you will, madame. Sir, sir, madams. It's so easy to just immediately start picking things up and going, okay, well, I'll put this thing here. And that gets me these two orange things, yeah? And it seems like there's really not that much to it. But there's just enough, and that just enough comes in at the game's finale. Once both players have placed all six of their tokens and taken a pair of flowers for each, there's still a bunch of flowers left on the table. For each flower, you just work out who has the closest piece. 
Comedically, uh, yet yeah, understandably, the game comes with this little transparent ruler, which is good for solving arguments about straight lines, but also working out exactly who is closest to that piece, me or you. But the manual kind of just says, talk about it, vibe it. We thought that was a little bit, I don't know, unrealistic when we first played this. We expected it to be a few, mm, I don't know, I think actually my piece is closer to that, but in reality, it takes about a second. Uh, that one's definitely mine, that one's definitely mine, mine. Uh, this one, mm, I think it's close to me actually, yeah. Sweeping up the entire board takes a matter of moments, frankly, where you just take all the ones that you know are definitely yours, and then there's only two or three at the end where you think, okay, I'm not so sure about that. Afterwards, you just look at who has the most flower color for each type. If you've got more pink flowers than the other player, then that's a point. There's a total of seven points up for grabs with the seven different colors. Whoever got the most points is the winner. And so this is a game where you really could have had an annoying time working out who wins, but it's just done. I got a taller stack of blues than you, I get the point for that. I got four points, I'm a winner. Now I'm personally not a fan of the format of explain the game's rules and then just say, it's good. But the difficulty with abstract games is often there really isn't that much to say. And crucially, this is really good and I think lots and lots of people should play it and probably own it. I mean, oof, look at this. What a delightful tube to add to your collection of tubes. But the first special thing here I'd like to highlight is the feeling of freedom. I think a lot of people who play games might look at this and go, well, for us, shut up and sit down, don't review anything like this. Why don't anybody review the big proper games, the ones that I like? You're wrong. People get excited about X-Wing, right? And that game, admittedly, was wicked. But it wasn't wicked because of all the fiddly little cards and the dice rolling. It was wicked because you could fly an X-Wing off the edge of the table and it was gone. That's cool. This has a similarly fuzzy feeling to it. This sense of like, I've got these pieces and I can put it wherever I want down to a micromillimeter, and it might be relevant. Blocking other players, not just for the next move, but the potential move after that is crucial. And also maintaining this spread of pieces around the map, making sure that at the end of the game, you're gonna snaffle up as much of the bonus stuff as you possibly can. There's just enough going on here to make you really scratch your chin and think about where you're gonna place this in this seemingly infinite sea of possibilities. The second reason I think this game might be quite special is it's a two player game that's remarkably chill. You know, it does get a little bit crunchy sometimes when you're trying to play the game on the edge of the game and really thinking one step ahead, but you're still just picking up nice things and putting them down in place and going, ooh, hmm, just doing this is nice. Just the feeling of moving your hand around this sort of circular map holding these pieces. It's just pensive, delightful. Too many games that act like, oh, you know, it's a really relaxing, chill, cozy game aren't. Like Hanabi. I hate Hanabi. I can't really explain why. I just hate Hanabi. I hate it. I Do I hate fireworks? Maybe I do by proxy. I hate it that much. Is it fair? No. Am I right? Absolutely not. I guess what I'm trying to squeeze through this uh, horrendous wall of aggrieved nonsense that I, I seem to have constructed is that often when games act like they're chill, they're actually just twee. They're actually just a bit soft and like, ah, oh, well, we're all friends. And I like being friends and doing that sort of thing. But the heart of like chilling out, of having a kind of relaxing ambience is not that, it's something else. And what's leading me to believe that this isn't pure coincidence is the last game I've played, which was wonderfully meditative at two players, was The Fuzzies, another game produced by CMYK. What appeared to be a dumb party thing was actually wonderfully relaxing whilst played just with two people, having this strangely competitive alien topiary sort of thing. It doesn't look relaxing. It really is, just trust me. And while I've absolutely no idea how I managed to find relaxation in a game of effectively doing surgery on a Muppet. This is understandable. What CMYK do best, and one of the reasons that we love them, is production. And the production quality here makes the game. This piece of material 
it's really nice to touch, not in a weird way. It's really nice to touch. It's very aesthetic. Ooh, bright colors. Feels nice. These pieces, ooh, edges, fun. And the real star of the show, these metallic player pieces. I am really not a fan of pointlessly used materials in games, but the fact that these are metal, that is a decision which is correct. Not only is it fun hovering around this web of possibilities, but holding these wonderfully tactile, strange things, shifting them around, gently moving them back and forth to get them exactly where you want them, it is tremendously satisfying. And they look great. The whole thing looks great. And hey, I'm not gonna lie, ours is an industry which is plagued uh, consistently by the fact that people fall in love with things just because they're pretty. Uh, it's a bit harder to get past me though, if I'm honest. I'm a really, really mean man. And in this instance, yes, it's very attractive. It's very cool. But the crucial thing is, after I've played it, I've yet to play it with anyone who hasn't wanted to play it immediately again. And play it again is so easy. Just get all your pieces back and you just swipe up all of the bits. Just put them back into it. If you were a pro, you could probably develop some sort of siphoning system where you you use this and you just sort of pipe them all back in, pop the lid on, and get shaking again. It's just, it's just, even doing that is a lot of fun. But that really is all I have to say about Lacuna. It's the sort of game that coffee tables were literally designed for. It wasn't coffee, it turned out, it was, it was this. If you want another beautiful and strange partner for this, then The Fuzzies is unexpectedly I mean, two games, same publisher, both remarkably wonderful at two. And if you're looking for more delightfully light abstract games, Hive is a wonderfully tactile thing. Also, hey, that's my fish. Not really a wonderfully tactile thing, but it's very small, very good abstract fishy fun. And if you want something that's just two player and mean, then Ice Team, AKA Bear Chess, is a lovely tiny box of a shout. And that's it. That's all of the flowers that we brought for you today on this, the day of your wedding. Congratulations, wedding person. 